Do you have a drink for me, mate? Please? The man ponders his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. Right. Okay, so no drink for us, it seems. But you know what? That's, oh, plus one Psyche, minus one health. Um, does it do anything else? Ah, we can, we can use it like that, okay. Uh, oops, wrong button. Whoa, in your hand, a Rolidon. The double rainbow of synthetic hallucinogens, rare and gritty, a product of the age of atomic power. Uh, look at the little puck of liquid. What a funny little cat. Don't let the scary medical warnings throw you off. It's an inadequate antidote to radiation poisoning, but a potent antidote to boredom. Wait, radiation poisoning sounds scary. Hmm, open the cap. That's really not what I'm looking for. Um, uh, it's not gonna give you radiation. Yeah. <laughs> stupid. Parolidon is a perfect match for a badass junkie cop who's looking for a little heat. Let's open the cap. The container is warm to the touch. Or is that just the anticipation? You screw the lid open and look. A little slit on the side lets you just slurp it up like an oyster. Come on, slurp it. Oyster doesn't make it sound more appealing, to be honest. Uh, wait, won't Kim see me slurp it? What is he? Your mother? Is Kim your au pair? Slurp it. Slurp the morsel of danger joy. Uh, slurp it, but only a little. You suck a minuscule drop of extremely chemical smelling liquid <sighs> into your mouth. There, it seeps into your tongue. When you swallow, it's already almost all gone. Okay. Ah, so we have one uh, plus one psyche um, in general. I thought it would, it might just heal or something. Let's heal ourselves up real quick. Um, tastes like fire. Tastes like a kiss. Tastes like gasoline. Tastes like an anti-radiation drug. Yeah, it tastes, tastes like, like that. Many things, all melted into one conflagration in the back of your throat. As you look around. The world slowly exists as it did before. Only now, gentle flames lick at its edges as though it were a photo burning. Oh, really? No, of course not really. It's just a metaphor. The effect of that otherworldly drop of liquid is slower, more subtle than that of real flames, yet just as warm. This warm. It makes you want to share your discovery with Kim. Um, Kim, I just did a drop of that anti-radiation drug. It's great. Will I be able to stand straight and walk? Um, Why not? This government-developed substance seems very non-intrusive. You could even operate heavy machinery. Fire machinery. Please don't actually operate any fire machines. Oh, damn it. I wanted to do that. Uh, this is going to be so useful in my line of work. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell Kim to take some drugs. I don't. He doesn't seem like the type who would take it. So let's just finish the thought. Already, you can tell you're going to be sloping a lot more Parolino. This stuff is going to give you insight into that little flickering light hidden in all human. In the bottom right corner of the screen, there's a Perolidon button. It gives plus one to Psyche skills. Empathy, Suggestion, Authority, Inland Empire, Esprit de Corps, and Volition. This is good before rolling a white check, but damages your health. Oh, interesting. Okay. Wait, um... One second, my taskbar just popped up, I'll try to get it to go away so I can actually see the bottom of my screen. Uh, it's only gonna take a second, I suppose. 
I've never really had to mess around with uh, the settings about that. So. There we go. That's done. Now we can actually see it. And I can see the button. That's wonderful. Oh, and there's the crowbar button. Okay, now uh, we could do that here. I suppose. Can we not? Oh, yeah. We can use a skill point to do that. I don't know how useful that is, though. Ah, we can also forget those if we want to. I'm not going to forget the aces low, of course. That seems very useful. Um, left wing dialogue gives XP, but it's minus to visual calculus and authority. Um, I'll keep it for now. Uh, I don't think it's really useful, but I like to keep it around. Um, Hand-eye coordination, reaction speed. Ooh, all those got better, yeah. Um, we could add authority. I mean, authority is the weakest, but... I mean, yeah, authority is the weakest one in general for us. So let's level it up. There we go. Let's accept the changes and close. Okay, now let's head outside, open the trash container, and then I just realized that there's a um, the pry bar button down here. We might be able to use that, and I just missed it at, at, at some point. So I'm gonna take a look at the, uh, at the iron shutters for the what was it for the chimney or furnace or whatever and give that a shot and if it doesn't work that's also fine this trash container is locked the sliding lid has a padlock that says whirling in red there's something in there not necessarily connected to the case but still okay let's open the padlock with the key with a well oiled crack the lock pops open it should now be possible to simply raise the lid. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Uh, or maybe I should. Uh, didn't I just have a premonition that there's something in there? There is. But you won't like it. Sweat forms on your brow. Your hand is still on the lid. Uh, I have three uh, psyche and two health. I think I can handle it. Let's open the it. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. We're just in time. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. Uh, look under the boxes of carton, uh, pick at the rags, search the food waste, or close the lid. Uh, under the boxes of carton. You see milk and egg rest with one broken egg in it. Some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. I'd assume so, honestly. You've done this before. The movements are recorded in your elbows. The methodology in your fingers. You're used to this. You're used to what? Dumpster diving? No. Searching for evidence in the trash. Well, let's dive further then. The falls into pieces in your hands. Batiste Sole cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below. And turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Let's pick at the rags. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. Well, don't mind if I do then. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. Ooh. Are these the victim's clothes? The smell is not nearly as bad as the cadaver. These clothes could not have been in contact with the deceased for more than two days after his death. Oh, interesting. Cadaverino door is faint. If these belonged to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Drop them in here, officer. Uh, the lieutenant produces a, a black plastic bag marked evidence from his pocket. By early stages, you mean these were taken from him no more than two days after his death? Yes. 
I think the clothes were thick enough to get to that armor he wore, then discarded. They must have stripped him of it fast too, the scavengers, in a matter of days. Well, but... Hold on now. The, uh... The thing is locked, so... Maybe we should have some questions for God? Or the, the lady that, that uh... Tended the bar here? Guitar marked blue jeans. Pockets. Empty. Or empty. He wore them with a belt, too. A white belt. The loops appear stretched, but... He looks into the container. The belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. Let's reach for it. A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. Let's back the shirt. This is a military type overgarment. No mm. label or serial number. This is the kind of red knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. Anything more? The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug that catches your eye. But other than that... A uh, thrown out towel, a mug, that's all. All right. We should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or that one. I'd advise against confronting that force. Yeah, we need to ask the kids to put them there. You think someone from the Whirling might have been involved, maybe? Not really. All we know is the victim's clothes are in the trash. The lid was locked and his establishment had the key. It's just a small loose thread. Uh, yeah, we need to ask the kids who put them the, uh, put them here. What the fuck's he on about, kids? You hear that, Kuno? He thinks you're an infant or something. See? Okay, let's the proceed. Nods, then looks back into the trash container. Oh, we can search for food waste. It's just organic waste, cold and slimy on your hands. Apple and potato pills, mostly. Unidentified sludge and the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey, nothing. It's nothing. Nothing more to see here. What's this? What? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. It's shiny. Looks like the corner of something. Something larger. A clipboard. A blue plastic clipboard with moist papers hanging from it. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes, written in a man's handwriting. Officer, is that your paperwork? No, it can't be. I don't know what this is. It is. Look, the plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an autopsy form in there. A miserable looking slip of paper sticks to the board. If you don't mind me asking, how did this get in the trash? It must have been cramping my style. It has a foreboding quality to it. Maybe I needed to lose it for the great blood uh, for the great bloodletting to begin. I think I didn't want to be a cop anymore, so threw it away. Someone from the whirling threw it in the trash. I don't know. I'm boring. I'd rather not talk about that uh, about it uh, about it right now. I think I didn't want to be a cop anymore, so threw it away. Well, he doesn't know what to say. You should take stock of what remains, just to be sure some has not made it into the hands of the RCM's adversaries. Organized crime and the like. There might have been police secrets in your notes. Uh, okay, I'll do that. Say nothing or uh, I don't know, man. Sounds like an order. I don't take those. Yeah, I'll do that. It would also not hurt to start taking notes on the case. Now, tell me what your eagle eyes see. Or are we finished? Some items, such as the ledger you found, are interactable. Go to your inventory and select the interact tab to read your paperwork. Uh, the mug, I'm getting that mug too. You pick out a broken mug with an oddly racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. Um, an antique? Only in its social sensibility. Oh, I don't want to take the mug anymore. Can we smash it? Interesting. Reminds me of the mug collection we saw in our weasel's apartment. Maybe he or she has been dumping the garbage here. 
That could be true, yes. An interesting little clue. Let's see where this goes. Clues have a way of magically connecting to other clues down the road. Or it may just be a coincidence. Either way, something to keep in mind. What else do you see? Oh, let's close the lid the again. Container sounds of muffled gong. Wonderful. That's one thing off the list. I think we got it all. <laughs> let's not open it again. Let's let's leave for now. Okay, so interactable. There's the damaged ledger. This is a ledger full of. This is a ledger you found in the trash. It's full of notes written in a man's dense cursive. Have a closer look. Maybe it can be salvaged to start keeping notes of the case. Let's interact. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Oh, that's delightful. Um, anything else? There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper, desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. Below the pathetics, terror. Do not look into its blue heart. Let's inspect the toilet paper. It's just toilet paper sticking to the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Um... Maybe it's ki uh, kitchen tissue? They look exactly the same. If you want it to be kitchen tissue, it can be kitchen tissue. It's not, though. It's toilet. <laughs> oh, no. Perception smell. That that makes it even worse. Let's... Yeah, let's take it off. Still wet. The toilet paper. I mean, kitchen tissue. Sorry. Peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off your finger and voila. The ledger now looks marginally better. Let's inspect the clip. An aluminium block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. Uh, let's run our fingers across the aluminium. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. Looks like an official mark, made to be low visibility outside the right circumstances. It is similar to the RCM watermark on your blazer the lieutenant mentioned. Didn't he say something about the headlights of his motor carriage? That you can read these there? Uh, lieutenant, is this one of the hologram watermarks you mentioned? What? Yes, uh... Allergen watermark used for adding information to RCM property. Uh, interesting. What kind of information? It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. Maybe yours will have how many cases you've solved. How many years you've been on the force, he's thinking. It'll have that. Uh, how can I read it? Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. Uh, you mentioned the headlights of your kinema? Yes, RCM vehicles have headlights tuned especially to reveal halogen watermarks. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights off. Uh, that's all, thank you. Okay. He returns to his neatly kept notes. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. Uh, let's browse the white papers. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden crumpled up earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. What is in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51 this year. 
The exact number is hard to estimate due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases undertaken, not completed, mind you. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. What do you mean? Is that all? Uh, that's it. Uh, is two cases a week uh, a good caseload, Lieutenant? Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. Uh, two cases a week appears to have been my load, Lieutenant. I'm not sure I completed them, though. Two? That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. Uh, I'm sure I made plenty of mistakes. I burned out all right. A nice brisk pace, that's the way I like it. Um, I burned out. That's okay. We all do, sooner or later. Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense, if mostly illegible. Uh, there was a mention of naming convention here? Yes. It appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title one might say even. One that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop show staples. Oh my, and they're, uh, and they're written in capital letters too. Yes, all caps. One is called the Next World Mural. Another, the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, the Unsolvable Case. More? Others appear more lighthearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location and the murder at the Uka parlor. Even the rare article free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close. Um, Kim, my cases appear to employ some kind of naming convention. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? Uh, no, I mean a non-numeric one with titles. Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. Why is that? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. I seem to have a, uh, I seem to have named the case the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that to amuse myself. I pray his loved ones never find out. What happened to him? I mean, I think it's relatively self-explanatory, isn't it? Rail spike through the head. He died. It was a workplace accident. Um, count the pages. I have to open an official case. Is there a room? There is, for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Once all the tasks are accomplished, the case is complete. Oh, let's commit to paper. The tasks you've completed flow out of the kind green ape pen in a brash freehand similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. A language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Get the body down. Interview the cafeteria manager. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. Uh, let's cross out the ones we've already finished. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. You're a swashbuckler with that pen, Harry. And it feels good. Feels like completion. Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. 
This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizens' militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. Lieutenant, have you by any chance named our case? No, actually. Any ideas? The Hanged Man? Well, the Furies are at home in the mirror? The Setting Sun? Shit on a stick? Actually, I don't have one. I mean, the Hanged Man seems relatively reasonable for that one. Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking, too. The Hanged Man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. I'm going to start calling it the Hanged Man. It's good to be sorted, you know. Um, that's it? The notebook is annual. It says 51 on what remains of its cover. A molten strap of cardboard. Everything prior to this must have belonged to a previous volume. In short, there was more. I'm done expecting these. Let's close the case files. You don't exactly close them. So much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. Oh, right. That was just the clip. That's, uh... Oh, no, that was browsing the files. Okay, logic. Um, can I read the case files now? Um... You know what? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the other ones first. Maybe we get some more plus points. I mean, we should succeed, but still. Uh, the yellow papers. In the back, you see thin, translucent copy of paper. Some neon yellow, some bright red, all covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms waiting to be filled out. Then rip them from the binder and hand them out, according to type of form. What types of forms are there? Three. The topmost are misconduct fines. The middle ones are station calls. And the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. You don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work. Uh, field autopsy? A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age, sex, condition of internal organs. One second, I have to... Okay. And we're back. Okay, um, let's see the station These call. These are quite sinister in turn. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. All in a print so small it could be considered downright cute. And the misconduct fine? A monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields. But they appear pleasantly vague. Uh, enough of these? Yes. All that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copy of paper. Uh, let's look at the clipboard itself.